hard to read. It says, uh, I should have, I should have included also, um, the, the drug addicts as well. I'm, uh, supporting harm reduction and the care for all people, no matter what, not just selective. So, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff about, uh, we need to, we need to take care of our community. We need to take care of our community when talking about the parks, but they, it usually it excludes or looks down upon people who are suffering from the opioid epidemic or other. And, uh, it's a lot more nuanced than that. It's not as simple as, you know, it's like if you get, if you clean up the parks, there's still going to be people suffering from drug addiction. And, uh, you know, you can offer to give them to rehab, but when they get out of rehab, will they have a place to go or will they end up back on the street? So I also have a sign that talks about a... Uh, where drug addicts can go under a supervised personnel that know how to use Narcan and do CPR. They can go and they can use safely because um, harm reduction is about meeting people where they're at. You can't force somebody to get clean, but you can you can show somebody that you care enough about them, stranger or not, that they, they're they just cared about. And that's well, kind of the gist of it. Well, here, let me, let me ask you. Yeah. Uh, are you really caring for somebody if you're helping them to kill themselves? Uh, there is a difference between setting boundaries and completely cutting people off from human care are two different things. Oh, I right? yeah, I understand. So, so when you so so if somebody is someone safer, right, in a space where there is Narcan right there, where there are trained personnel who want to be there, or you know, under the bridge. How does that result in them at some point no longer doing drugs? So. The main goal is to keep people alive. There are there, people are dropping like flies. Human beings and their business and what they do and when they want to get clean, that's not our business. Oh. That's not it's not our choice. But but wait a it's minute. It's not our business. Th then why is it our why then do we have to fund that? <laughs> if it's not our business, then it's none of our business and we can just so, uh, be Okay, you know. let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Okay. I've been, I've seen and I've witnessed and I've experienced what, you know, the harm, like how, you, how getting like drugs and homelessness can affect you, right? And um, getting clean is the objective of, of most uh, punishment-based, uh, you know, action or methods, right? It's like, uh, if you don't get clean, you don't get shit. Excuse my language. It's all right. Um, so, right, like... When they get clean, how they get clean, if they want to get clean, that is a that's a, like that's a part of them and their journey that that we don't know because we're not living their life. So, in terms of okay, funding, but but if I feel like, and and it's it's I'm free to hold the opinion that if I'm facilitating somebody using drugs, I'm helping to kill them. That, okay. So, so but wait here, wait a minute. So if, if I'm doing that. I'm helping to kill them. So, um, what, what obligation is there for the person to stop using drugs? Or uh, because I'm helping them, and uh, my objective should be considered at some place in this. If you do something to get something back in reward, or you expect somebody to do something, and that's where you give your care, right? Like then, like then, working a job to get paid so you can eat. So, you know. <laughs> Helping people and harm reduction and caring about addicts and, and the homeless and, 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 and homeless addicts, um, it's not to get anything in return. It is to keep people alive. Um, it is to keep them alive long enough to be shown care because I can... Okay, well, who shows them the care then? Who, who, who gives them the care that leads to change? So people like... Organizations like the HIV and Alliance. Free. <laughs> it, it pisses them off. It really does. Um, organizations like HIV Alliance do free HIV testing. They give out, um, you know, free Narcan, free condoms, things that protect them and keep them equipped. Because, you know, at least at least they can keep themselves protected, or they can, you know. But 
So, have you seen, you've seen success stories where uh, somebody spent a long time being homeless and on drugs, and then they came out of that and they became uh, productive members of society and they're clean and they feel much better about themselves. Why, why isn't that an okay objective to have? To get off the street and get a job? I'm sorry? I, I'm, I think I'm confused by your so, question. Why is it not a good objective no, 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 to no, no, no. try and it, help it people is. change their lives so, for the better? So here's the thing. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing, but when you have expectations about how people get there or what their, their decisions are and how like they make that happen for themselves, when you put like qualifications for care and you put like expectations on that care, you're like, how, how is that fair? And it never has been black and white. But I can tell you that the reason that the problem, part of the reason that it has been getting worse so and, and accelerating at such a high rate is because I don't think I have ever seen any type of care like this on a global like rate. And the, the common like the common way of well, doing this. Some would the say they're closer to getting that here now. And it also has resulted in a growing problem with more homeless and more crime and that, more drugs. And that, I, I promise you, I promise you that caring for addicts does not make that does not make crime worse. This is a systematic issue that has a lot of different factors, right? You know, it's not just oh, it's because addicts are using. Like the price of living is too damn high. Getting a job is hard, especially when you're homeless and you don't have a place to go and you don't have a shower and you don't have money to buy clothes For to sure. go get a job and you don't have an address to put down. There are so many different factors that all tie into the same thing, which is why it's not as easy as saying, well, why is one, why is it frowned upon for them to get a job? It's not, but how you do that, how you do that matters and how you, how you treat people based on what you think you are getting out of it or like, okay. So should we judge success in this by the numbers? Like uh, how many people come out of uh, and re return to a normal productive lifestyle in one method of treatment or another? It's, it's all working towards the same thing. It is not one or the other, but it starts with keeping people alive. The goal is not, hey, you need to go to rehab and get clean. It's, hey, I don't want you to die because you're a human being and you don't deserve to die just because you're a, just because you've gotten to this point in your life okay but i could not want somebody to die but that's not going to change their own behavior they may be working against me in that respect i'm trying to I, stop them from dying but they're trying to kill themselves thank you thank you i know that guy um <laughs> we love you president trump we like your glasses Oh, Jesus Christ. So, what, when, the objective of keeping people alive, why is that not enough? Why is that, why does, why do, why does, like, as an outside, maybe, like, you feel like you're owed for your efforts? Why is that something that... Well, uh, th there is a difference um, in why you do things. Uh, in many cases, people are doing things uh, for virtue signaling purposes. They want to be seen as good people. They may not necessarily be good people, but they want to jump through certain hoops and make themselves look good without actually doing good. Okay. And, and, and so, what would you say if somebody said, <laughs> when you give people a, a safe place to shoot up, you are attempting to look good without actually doing good. I'd say you don't understand the mission. You don't understand fully what harm reduction is, what it means, and why we do it. And I, you can ask... So what's harm reduction? Harm reduction is meeting people where they're at and keeping them alive. It's all what I have been saying. It is reducing the harm that addicts and the homeless end up facing. Like dying without ever, you know discarded under a bridge in their van in the heat for days without any care because oh well they use drugs they didn't get clean they deserve it that doesn't make any sense no one deserves to die because they've gotten where they're at whether it's you know from what like it's it's people feel like the inf 
it's it's not our business how you got here, but you're cared about whether or not you use, because 99.9% .9 of the people that are in harm reduction that like are, uh, you know, trying to get it out there have either been affected by like directly or indirectly or been a drug addict or on the streets before. And I can tell you that those people have the most compassion and kindness because they know what it is like to be in the gutter, ignored by everyone else. And even as bad as they felt in that time, like to be to just somebody saying, hey, like, I don't, I just want you to be here. Well, you know what? This is a point my friend David here was just making a few minutes ago because he has been in that situation. He has been homeless before. I don't think, you were a long time ago. But were, yeah, you, no, for, were you doing drugs or whatever no, during dr time? No drugs. Oh. I, I had the fear of God put in me, and that's why I'm not living on the street anymore. Ah. Okay. Although, although I don't mean to imply that just because a person lives on the street that they're bad people either. Right. I didn't get that from you. But I have a question. Yeah. So, like, I mean, from the outside, you know, like, you want to talk to me, you want to whatever, you listen to what I have to say, you, you know? Um, I only got sober a month ago. Mm. One month ago. It's the longest I've been clean in years. That's good. Right. Glad I didn't get it. I didn't get there from anybody and I and I I, I tried getting sober and it didn't work. And so, I tried doing it for other people and it didn't work. So what did work? I made the decision for myself. And and I'm gonna kinda keep those reasons, you know, for me, because that's a personal thing. But it's it's it, if it's not if I don't make the decision to do it, it doesn't stick. I can promise you that. That's ultimately true. Yeah. And for everybody. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's uh, you know some people they hit rock bottom, and that's the trigger. And uh, and some people never make that decision, and they wake up dead with a needle in their arm. Right. And maybe. <laughs> Maybe if they're reminded that needle in their arm or not, they're worth care, they're worth being looked at like a person, that might matter. The, the goal is not like how many do we get out of this. It's, it's on the off chance that one person believes that, that's a win. And that will always be a win. And that's, that's the goal. Thanks for talking to me. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Adara. Adara? Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you. taking the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>